just stopping the tumbler there. If you watched yesterday's video, you will know that I was experimenting with the titanium vegetable peelers. Um, I keep having to think about that because I do titanium cheese slices as well and I, got them, I always get them mixed up. So, basically the last 48, so, whoa, a bit splashy. 48 hours, 72 hours, just been sort of non-stop testing with this. Now, this is the last 36 hours testing, or sorry, 24 hours testing. It's kind of like the moment of truth. Will this experiment work? You know, where I, I sort of like cable tied vegetable peelers together in a certain way and, uh, you know, just, yeah, basically, you know, truthfully, I'm a little bit apprehensive because it's like, well, if this doesn't work, it's back to the drawing board. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how today's video is going to go. Um, it's very late afternoon already. Um, I'll be absolutely brutally honest with you. Some days, you know, I can just talk about so much. I can show you so much in my videos, whether it's milling and stuff like that. Today is one of those days where I'm just stuck in my own head. I'm just in my head. You know, I'm, I'm trying to do this and it's like, I don't know if I have anything for you. So what I'll do is I'll just take you along with me. That's what today's video is gonna be about. So what I'm gonna do now is empty all these out. There is 100 titanium vegetable peelers in there. Um, in fact, in the description of today's video, I will put a link to my machinist website where you can pre-order these titanium vegetable peelers and the titanium cheese slices as well. Um, they're his product, I just do so the beginning part and the end part, I do the water jet cutting of the blanks before he machines them, he does all the machining, and then I do the sort of finishing process, so I sort of finalize them. Uh, so, yeah, let's empty this thing. Right, so that is 100 titanium peelers out of the vibratory tumbler. Uh, they look okay. It's hard to tell until we go through the sort of semi-polishing process. So that's what's going to happen overnight. But I'm going to do another little test with something else just now. I think what I'll do now is answer some, some questions. You know, I get questions all the time. I keep meaning to answer them, the YouTube comment questions. But, I mean, there's never, for all the comments that there is, there's never actually that many questions. And it makes sense because, you know, you know, with all the, the videos and all the views and comments that, that YouTube videos get, like, how often are they actually um, answered, you know, but especially by the creator. But, you know, I do my best. If there was more questions, uh, especially good questions, then I, I would make more of a point to do it. But they're not, there's not that many. We'll have a look through, uh, see what there is anyway. Here's an idea to go with the card holder. How about titanium playing cards made from laser engraved thin sheet titanium? High end cards for the serious titanium product customer. Believe it or not, I think that's been done before. I think you might have seen a Kickstarter project, maybe a year or two of that. So type in titanium playing cards and I'm pretty sure a Kickstarter project will pop up. I can't remember if it was funded or not, but I do remember seeing it, pretty sure. What CAD software do you use for your design ideas? Uh, I've done, not done much CAD designing, but I use Solid Edge. Hey Magnus, if you become more articulate in making items, i.e. very small detailed items, will you make titanium bearings for your spinners? Almost certainly not. I don't think there's anything to gain with using titanium, unless it's just like it won't rust or, you know, anything like that. But, you know, from what I can tell, like ceramic, um, really is the best to go for, certainly for performance, maybe not for longevity, but no, I, I definitely won't be going anywhere near bearings. Unless I could invent something else that's like a bearing, uh, not sure, just a random thought. Magnus, why do you cable tie the vegetable peelers together? There is obviously a very good answer to this, but I can't think why. Um, it's a tricky one, uh, it's a very appropriate question for this. Sometimes I cable tie things together, sometimes I don't. Every item I make is unique. I mean, in fact, take a look at this. Now, these things here are various 
failed and experimental things from stuff I've made over the years. Now this is actually my first product here. I called it the Viperfish. It's a titanium multi-tool, bottle opener, hex, wren wrenches, screwdriver, all that sort of stuff. We got the pill pots. We got um, the tweezers. These are a wrecked pair of my old style tweezers. I just ripped them open for fun. Um, they usually, usually sit closer like that. The scalper bottle opener. Uh, the hang key pocket clip. So, I mean, this is like a selection. I'll show you a few more. The double-ended carabiner without the spring clips in. So you can see from that, there's just a whole load of different types of, uh, sort of different shapes, sizes of, uh, of these products. And you know what? There's always problems in tumbling. You know, whether it's a normal tumbler or the centrifugal tumbler, or the vibratory tumbler, like no tumbler is perfect and you know you're battling with parts hitting each other. Um, the tweezers for instance, um, when you tumble those, they would, do, they would do that, they would get stuck. So you'd put 100 in, you'd get 50 out, pretty much, 50 things that look like that. So, uh, um, so the, cable ties, the, the cable ties on the pillows is a bit of an experiment because we think the tips were hitting into the sides, not quite sure what it was. So I'm going, well, let's, let's put them tail to tail, see if that can stop that and sort of, you know, it's just an experiment to try and stop them scratching each other and, and sticking to each other and all these things we sort of battle with continuously. Like, even though we, I've kind of got the machining, the tumbling process kind of dialed in and I'm always, but I'm always kind of testing it and tweaking it. There's, every new product is a new challenge in tumbling, it really is, and it's, it's never, never ending. And you'll know that if you've watched the last couple of videos. I've just, you know, talked about, you know, like the trouble I have with this. But, you know, if I'm having trouble, I'm pretty sure others are having trouble. It's just, it just goes along with the territory of, of making sort of somewhat unique products in a unique way. Hey Magnus, what about a mini titanium spinner? More, more of a classy evening high-end mini spinner. I know you're all about quality, so I know it would come out nice. Um, oh, John Hanners. Hi, John. Um, yes, I, I want a mini spinner myself, and if I want something myself, it usually means you get it as well, like customers get it. So there's a good chance I'll make a really small one. However, I think I might do it out of, um, what do you call it? Tungsten. I've never worked with tungsten, but I've got a sheet on its way, and you know we'll see how it machines. Where can I get that keychain clip? That's awesome. I think you're referring to the one that's in my videos. Uh, I don't know. I've lost the car keys. Oh, here they are. If it's this one you're talking about, the gold one isn't available just now, but it will be soon. But I have the ordinary titanium version. That is available on my website. And there's always a link to my website in every video description. What country are you from? Scotland. I live in New Zealand though. Magnus, please help. I'm looking for a good spinner under $30. Do you have any you recommend? Um, I, I really don't, to be honest. Um, that sort of price range isn't something I, I'm familiar with. And to be fair, I don't look at a lot of other spinners either. I kind of look around. I don't really buy that many, or if any. Um, I just kind of do my own thing. Um, so if I know what a spinner does, so I just go like, right, I want to make the ultimate for myself. It's got to have this, 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 this kind of features. It can't be like this, can't be like that. And I kind of ignore everything else that's going on. And that's actually true for pretty much every product I do. Past one year, exclamation mark, question mark, exclamation mark. Where was the celebration? Congrats on, congratulations on being committed and it's obviously paying off. That's by Jason Holland. Hi, Jason. Um, I did reply to your comment. Uh, yeah, the celebration was I made a titanium play button um, maybe around about a week and a bit ago, something like that. So um, if you look back a few days, I made, a, I made myself a titanium play button and, sort of, and, and gifted it to myself, really. Right, that is me done here, I think. Right, so back at the house. I think I'm gonna call it a day at that. Um, it's funny, like, 
I don't think I lead a very interesting life. Um, when I've got some stuff about like milling and things like that to show you, then I'm like, oh yeah, I can show you this. I've got different camera angles, you know, I put in a, f but it takes like, it takes at least half a day, maybe even a full day, just to get that 10 minute video of sort of milling and making something. And you know, I'm not in the workshop every day. I've got like, I do as much or more online work than I do physical stuff. It's just the nature of the business and it growing it, you know, and doing the titanium stuff and what I'm doing. Um, I do a video every day, one a day. Sometimes I've done a couple if I've you know, answered questions or something, but I'm wondering if I should keep doing that. I really do want to do that. It's just that like, I, you know, I get a day like this and it's just like, I know there's only gonna be like 500 or 1,000 people viewing the video, but when I do one on spinners, there's like at least five, 10, 15, 20,000 views. Um, but you know, I kind of want it to be about my life and my business as well. As selfish as that sounds, I think there's like, you know, short term people might come for a spinner and then leave again, or come for something else and then leave. But if I share my life with you, there's a sort of kind of pseudo relationship there, you know, like um, I don't know you individually, but you perhaps feel like you know me. Uh, interestingly enough, um, I, got a, I got a phone call from someone who I, I know from the comments and you know, we, we go back like a year, so he's been commenting and things. And he phoned me, that's the weirdest thing. I just felt like I knew him but I'd never spoken to him before that. So that was interesting. That was really interesting. So maybe there is a f sort of relationship. Um, but yeah, so I think I think it's good to sort of do that, let you in on my life, you know, sort of my house. Um, not so much inside because it's kind of untidy most of the time. I don't really tidy up. I sort of spend my time in the workshop and in my head and kind of let things... Anyway, I'm rambling. I will leave you with a quote. It is by George Washington Carver and he said if you do the common things in an uncommon way you will command the attention of the world.